Okay, testing. I right, good. I've got some. Uh, I've got some sound there, and I'm starting about eight minutes early, as I tend to do. <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, those who who join us uh, will be able to go back at the start and see what we've covered. I have really two main things I want to do today. Uh, I want to talk about really three things. First of all, talk about the announcements and what's over here, and then I want to talk briefly or, uh, about the, the exam, the quiz that's coming up, excuse me, and then talk about case number five, and, and so these are kind of, uh, the first two are kind of housekeeping things, and then the case number five is really the, the meat and the heart of everything. So, uh, you know, um, uh, again, when everybody, when, folks, when you log in over here, you're going to see uh, the following things. You're going to see something like virtual hours out there. When I'm on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, when I'm in Oklahoma City, I do have virtual hours, and they tend to be in the afternoons, okay? And so for today, the virtual hours are from uh, 4 o'clock to 5.30. Uh, yesterday, they were from 3 o'clock to 5.30. And so you, those hours are posted, and, and if someone needs to stop by, they can. Now, you're also going to see a, a recording. This is when I have done a screencast, converted it to a YouTube file, and then uploaded it, okay? And then, you also, then you'll see this thing called an invitation. This is, the, this is where you link. You, you come in and you link in to join uh, a, a screencast. Uh, and, and to join it live. So I want to make sure everybody understands that. So when it says recording, uh, that means, or, or screencast, that means it's one I have posted over YouTube. And really what you can do is you can just even look here, and if you see YouTube, that means that's a recording for that class session. So I wanted to kind of get that out of the way to make sure that there wasn't any confusion on everybody's part in terms of what was going on. Now I want to pop over here to the uh, to the to the modules section, okay. And as I mentioned before, uh, the modules are basically how the the the, uh, the this uh, Canvas room, I guess you would call it, is are divided up. You can either do it by topics or by or chronologically, and I do it uh, I do it with the topics. Pardon me, with the chronology, the week we're in, and then. Uh, move then uh, going down to the specific topics and sometimes I'll even even I will even provide kind of a description now to today of course uh, Monday was the fifth we met in uh, and of course you know then today's a virtual day and you've got three things that are due on the eighth okay and those are all due on on uh, on 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 uh, Thursday the eighth okay and we'll go back over to the syllabus section for just a moment. And that has a listing of all the assignments that are due. And you can see the financial ratios quiz is due by 5 p.m. Uh, XLS1, which you should have already uploaded, is due by 5 p.m. The same thing for XLS2. Now, the very first week we did XLS3, so you should have XLS3 already uploaded. And then on Monday, we looked at XLS4, okay, uh, and, um, and, and we did that. So XLS1, I, was, I think, was, I think one of them was, uh, uh, well, you just go to the chapter, go to the, uh, the table of contents on the Solvent 6.0 book. Case one is whistle cleaners. Uh, case two is Athena Beauty Products. Guardian Roofing Payroll was was the case number three, okay, where I should, and, and that I did the first day lets you see a fully developed spreadsheet and a really well designed one, and we, as we started to talk about spreadsheet design. Then of course, XLS1 was about formatting and that type of thing. XLS2 is that little marketing case where we, we took those who visited the website, who became shoppers, and the shoppers, percentage who became attempted buyers, you know, that business. And then uh, XLS3, of course, we've talked about that. And then in, in XLS4, which was case number four, that was Dabney Financial Services, we looked at uh, 
uh, using financial ratios to uh, compare two companies. And we compared Walgreens and we compared, we compared CVS and Walgreens. Okay, and that was also intended to show you, again, uh, spreadsheet design principles and, and to introduce you to the concept of financial ratios, okay? And it should be, no, then it, it should not be a, uh, any surprise that, you know, you've got a financial ratio, ratios quiz coming up, okay? And the financial ratios quiz is, is, is pulled from case number four, and then I also have resources there on on the uh on the way here in 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 canvas and then also the supplemental website okay and it's an open book open note exam and we've talked a quiz and we've talked about that before uh and again just to make sure we're all on uh, understanding what's going on i am working ahead in the excel cases I'm doing so because I know that when we hit the access cases, we may have to go a little bit slower because people have not had as much uh, experience working with access. And I do want you to have an understanding of databases, okay? Uh, because they're the, the, those tools are important to know. And having a good understanding of, of databases and how and why we use them from both the and how they're developed from what I would call the back office piece, the people who develop, and then from the end user, you'll be way ahead of your contemporaries when you go out to work and an employer asks you, have you worked with databases? Are you comfortable with them? And you will and you'll be able to say that for sure. In the meanwhile, as we do the Excel cases, we're walking through some very common business problems that we run into. Okay, Dabney, uh, 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 pardon me, case number three, Guardian Financial Roofing was about having to create a payroll register, making sure it's correct, okay. Uh, the case number two, which was Athena Beauty Products, was I'm trying to de determine, uh, they remember they had an e-commerce site and they were trying to determine, all right, uh, where, do their, where, did the visitor, where did their visitors come from, that was, you remember that call me at the source, okay? And then what's happening in what we call the, con the lead conversion process where they come in and they visit and they eventually end up buying something. And so we wanna see the percentages. And, and, that, and this is similar to what we call a Markov analysis where we look at consumers' choices as they go through the purchasing process. Then we looked at, not, at case number four, Okay, that was on Monday. We looked at Dabney Financial Services, and we talked about how we use ratios to be able to compare a company. Now, when we finished, we had a comparison of CBS versus Walgreens. We could also go get industry figures, okay, in terms of the ratios and compare either or both of those firms against other firms in their industry. And we don't do that there, but you can. It may not be all the ratios, but on selected ratios, you certainly can go to a place like Bloomberg or Yahoo Finance or Motley Fool, and you could see those, and, and, and it lets you then say, okay, a firm's in the industry. How does Walgreens compare versus them? How does Walgreens compare versus CVS? Typically, though, people are most interested in their competitors and how do they size up against them. And as we did that and we looked at it, we realized uh, that Walgreens had a better set of ratios. And we talked about the different type of ratios and, and, and what they mean. Uh, the textbook there, the, the, the Solvit 6.0 textbook, shows you how to compute those ratios, tells you what they mean. Okay, so that, that, that and, and we did so, and also we saw some use. I was, I was so, pardon me, we also looked at the name manager, okay, and how to, and how to use it so that we identify a certain cell as a variable, we give it a name, and that way when we can do, when we do computational work, uh, we're, we're working with a, a, a name, not a cell reference. 
and so we and so I, that that helps us keep from making errors and that type of thing. So we've come a ways so far, and and now to and now today in the city of Clintwood, uh, this is the case XLS number five. It's the town of Clintwood. We're going to build on that, okay, by doing a little bit of work in terms of trend analysis. Now, let me note something for you. If you look down here, okay, you're going to see. Uh, we we sh I believe we have a. You'll see back down here in April. There will be a quiz on trend analysis, and that trend and that trend analysis quiz will be will be drawn from case number five, which we're working on today. So I'll remind you of that as we get down there. Uh, and uh, let me click on in and say hi to everybody for just a second. I'm glad to have you aboard. There you are, uh, Jesus, Kristen, Kyler, and Jonathan. Glad to have you here. And I'm going to mute all of you so we don't have any issues with uh, somebody's sound popping through. Okay, but if you do have a question, you can all, uh, certainly uh, signal the question, and and I will try to answer it. So let's go over first of all and look at the file that we're going to be working with. Now, click on the files area. Okay, and as you go down here, remember it, uh, you're going to find the student files, okay, and the Solvent 6.0 solution files, and the student files. The student files are what we call the skeleton files, okay. The solution files are, you know, solution files, but not, in my mind, always as well done as they ought to be, okay. Now, you say, well, Dr. Herman, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what you do in here today, and, 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 but I want to try this on my own. Feel free, okay? I'm not going to count off if you upload something there. Uh, and again, I'm running, this like, I'm running these cases, if you will, like a workshop, because I want to focus on you understanding the business problem as much as understanding, uh, you know, the software and how you do, uh, the, and, and the functions you use and design of, of the spreadsheet and all that business. Okay. I just, but I do want you to see something very well developed so you can see what it ought to look like. Okay. So if, if you come down here you, and you scroll down, we're going to go down and we're going to find, and this is, here's a file called XLSX, XLSX case five, use this one. And this is the file that we're going to use today when we look at this city of Clintwood. Okay. Now we've used, we've used Excel to do some ratios. We've used it to do a payroll register. And one of the other things we can do is we, can, we, we, we also want to look at one of the problems in business, and that is trying to do some forecasting, okay? And, and this is especially around budgets. We try to do forecasts of what will the budget look like, what will sales look like two, three years down the road. And so this, this uh, spreadsheet deals with that problem. Now, the city of Clintwood case, all right, and, and again, let me emphasize this. The Solvit 6.0 textbook, you should always have it with you when you come to class for the very simple reason it, that if you don't have it, you really can't put into context what I'm talking about, okay? And as I've said before, they, all of these cases have a familiar pattern that starts out, and I'm on page 54, okay? It's the town of Clintwood, excuse me. They tell you the problem that we're trying to work with. And, you know, n businesses need to do their budget forecasts as well as a municipality, okay? And uh, then we have some of the management skills, the Excel uh, skills, and then the file. And, that, and, and we're working with this file here uh, that we've opened up. This is one. And what I'm, here's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to save this file down on my desktop, and again, because, because you are working with, with files 
when you open one of the when you open one of the files up here in Canvas, it's it's a viewing file. If you don't save it, all right. If you don't save it down to a desktop or to your or to your iPad or whatever you're working with, uh, you're going to be in trouble because it, it just simply won't save. So I'm going to save it on my desktop because that's the easiest place to find it. I'll click on my desktop and I'm going to put use this one and I'm going to call it Harmon. Okay, and I'll save it. Now, one of the other things I'm, I typically like to do is go ahead and go back, close this off, and then go back to my desktop, okay, and and open it, and, and then reopen it. You see, there's Dabney from the other day, okay? Now, so I'm going to open this up, and so when it comes time for me to save it, I shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Okay, now again, we're looking at this case number five. We are, and we're working ahead, and I've explained all of that. All right, and so we should be in good shape in terms of understanding where we are in the course, and this idea that we're trying to work ahead to uh, to, to to share. To, pardon me, working ahead on um, on, uh, on on. You know, and getting some slack time. I do want to. I do want to direct you to uh, some some resources that are here, and and let me explain why I, what I'm doing. I will never give you a quiz on these resources, but if you're going to make a career in business, okay, and you're going to be serious about it, and you really want to excel, then uh, to be very good, I think you need to get in the habit of looking for resources and trying to enhance your knowledge about these topics. Here's a topic on out of Wolfram, which is a well-known mathematic, mathematics site on the golden ratio, okay? And then I have a, and then I have a, uh, a, a PDF here, I believe it's a short history of accounting ratios, talks about those. Then here's a, uh, here's a, a website on big charts, shows how about the development of charts, then here's some NASDAQ stock comparison, a tool and a Google finance company comparison, okay? And so those are some things you'll wanna look at, all right? So we've got that, that there, and we've talked about you know, what's due this week. So yeah, let's dive into this case now, all right? And again, those of you who've come in a little bit later, don't worry about it. Uh, you can always go to the start, of the of the video and pick up uh, and then stop where you get here. Same thing is just like you have a video at home DVD. Uh, you know, you you know record stuff. You uh, you go as far as you want. I want to show you something for just a minute. You notice this? What I've done is I've frozen this row. This is another one of these uh, uh, navigation navigational techniques you can use. Okay. And you can freeze a row or freeze columns so you can go ahead and move the files around, okay? And and not have to and 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 not really and and not have to be hunting and pecking all over. Now let's click on formulas for a minute and let's go in the name manager and see if I used it. And sure enough, okay, uh, I used I have some names in there. And these names relate to, and let's let's take this out a little bit. And let's find out what they refer to. And these are my assumptions. Okay. Now let's talk a bit again about the development of a good spreadsheet. And those of you who are kind of interested, in how do, how do you do that if you don't know how to freeze cells? Uh, freeze a, a row or, or, or so you can scroll or freeze a column, you can go out into Easy Excel and they'll tell you how to do it, okay? So I'll give you a kind of a little challenge to go out and find out how, how that's done. In the meanwhile, let's look and see if we have everything. Yes, we have the, the title of the spreadsheet. We have the documentation. We have an assumptions area. 
Then we have our input, um, pardon me, our output and data processing. Okay. And we're, as we, as we go through this, we're going to, uh, we're going to see how this, this is well designed. It takes my eye. Here's the town of Clintwood budget. And I'm, what I'm thinking is what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on home. And I want to go ahead and just where it says town of Clintwood budget, I'm going to go ahead and put some kind of a fill in there so that it really sets that off. In fact, I think I'll put the fill and then I think I'm going to put some borders around. As you see, okay, I'll embellish on these uh, and, and uh, you know, and you can always improve these. You can always get the look. But as long as I'm taking the, the, re, the, the end user from the general to the specific, okay, I'm in good shape. Now, if you look here, we've got the base, forecast, and forecast. We have the base year, and let's and put your put your cell and and click on B a nine, and highlight all the way over to D nine, and we're gonna put them in. We'll put those in the middle. Now, the base year for our forecast, the beginning year or beginning period is 2008, okay? Then we want to do a forecast for 2009 and 2010. I'm going to align those as well so they look really pretty, okay? Now, so like I said, you know, I can always kind of just embellish them, work with them, you know, as, as long as I'm adhering to these principles, uh, for the design principles, I'm in good shape. Now it's time for us to kind of look, take a look at the text and to look at the case and, and, and see where in the world did you get those numbers? Now I often have students in class, well, where'd you get those numbers? Well, they're, they're right here in the case. And here in the start of over page 54, this is in the Solve It 6.0 textbook. Uh, we're over here at page 54, and this is, they're talking about this city, this town of Clintwood, okay, and they want to develop a budget, okay, and they've made some campaign promises about, you know, uh, raising taxes only a certain percent, and uh, they've got to do some things with the city to help it stay, keep it, keep it growing and all of that. And that's all covered in page five, 54. So we, as usual, we get, we get a little bit of background about the organization that's involved, okay? Then we come over to the top of page 55. And they say, one way to analyze a budget is to estimate the, this is the very first sentence, to estimate the amount of cash, amount of, amount of each category of cash receipts and disbursements. Now, in, in government, you talk about you can you talk about revenues and disbursements as opposed to sales and expenses okay this isn't a class in public budgeting or governmental budgeting or anything of the sort but those are the terms uh, that that people who budget uh, public entities tend to use okay now, as you, as you come down to the second paragraph, you'll see there on page 55, the second paragraph, you're going to see the projections, i.e., pardon me, the assumptions that are being made for the budget. Okay? Now, Let's look at this for just a minute, this assumption area. And, and this is drawn from the middle, uh, that middle paragraph of page 54. And then, well, before we do that, then of course, as you see, we have the tasks with an additional problem. Okay. And we'll do those tasks. Now, you're going to find I often skip steps and then go back and on. I just, you know, again, when I put this together, I put it together. And, you know, you, you can usually, if you follow all the steps through, 
you'll end up with pretty much, you should end up with the same figures, if not necessarily uh, the same look. But if you really want to see how this ought to be done, I mean, here it is, okay? Now, let's look at the assumptions area, and we have a, we've done a good job of setting it off, okay? We've, we've, uh, we've, put, we've uh, highlighted the table, okay? And, we, and, we've, and we've named it appropriate assumptions, and we have assumptions about state aid. This is money that comes to the, the town of Clintwood from the state. Then we have an assumption about ex salary and expenses, okay? Then we have, uh, we have uh, assumptions about all other expenses, then uh, a, a tax level, and then miscellaneous receipts, okay? Now, there, and, and, and let's look at this. In the middle paragraph of page 55, they expect that the state will, do, will, will reduce its aid to the town by 6% each year. So if you take a look, you see 0 0.94, Look up here in the formula bar and you'll see one minus point, a uh, one minus zero point oh six. Okay. I do that for a reason because I may, you know, I, I might see this, they might come back and say, well, next year you can assume the state will give you a 6% increment. So when I'm dealing with these kinds of things, I, I, I do this just to remind myself I'm dealing with in increments and decrement. Increment means addition, decrement means, of course, a subtraction. Here it is, here it is one plus 0 0.09, and there they, uh, they, they've they been expecting um, uh, the employee salary benefits to increase at 13% annually. Now, I have a solution here that we had come up with, and I left it at one, uh, I left it at 1.09, but let's go ahead Okay, and, and let's take it back to 0 .1 plus, uh, uh, 0, uh, 1 plus uh, 0, 1 plus um, 0 0.13, which would give us the 13%, and we'll see that things have changed. And then we'll look at all other expenses. And we're going back to the original assumption. And we'll look at all other expenses. And they say all other expenses to um, raise at the rate of 6% annually. So all other expenses should be 1 plus 0 0.6. Okay. Then they have the tax levy. And they had originally promised that they were not going to raise taxes more than 4%, and then miscellaneous receipts um, uh, to raise 5%. So we're, gonna, so we're working with the original assumptions, okay? Here this says state aid will be reduced 6% per year. Employee salary benefits will go up 13% a year. All other expenses will go up 6% a year. The, and the tax levy, we promise only do a 4% increase, and miscellaneous receipts go up 5%, okay? Now, we start with our base year. This is, and let's look through this and examine what we, what, what's going on. Here's the tax levy, okay? Then here's the state aid. Here are the miscellaneous receipts. And then so we have total receipts. Those are the three income streams that we have, tax levy, state aid, and miscellaneous receipts. And that gives us our total receipts. Then we're gonna come down to the disbursements. And we're gonna start with salaries plus benefits, okay? And here in 2008, it's 1,667,000, okay? And then we'll see that for the town court, the town manager, the treasurer, the town engineer, the secretarial, and then we have other expenses, legal admin, employee benefits, environmental control, the library, debt service, debt services. They borrowed some money, and they have uh, they borrowed some money, 
and so they're paying interest. And notice that the interest stays the same, it's fixed. Okay, and then the total disbursements, okay, and then we have receipts less disbursements, and in this we take B16, okay, minus B38. Now you say this looks like a job, uh, this looks like a job for the name manager, and boy does it ever. Okay, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click formulas and I'm going to click uh, define name. And the name is going to be uh, total receipts uh, and that will be right there. Okay, I'll click OK. And then I'm going to click Define a Name. And we're going to call that Total Disbursements. Now, notice how I put all of the letters together. If you do not have each of these letters, either if you don't have both words joined together or have an underline, you'll get an error when you try to save it. Okay, so and then we'll go down here and we'll find um, total receipts and we're good. Okay, now I can come up here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase those two. And I'm going to put equal, and then I'm going to put using formula, total receipts, minus, and then using formula, total disbursements, and there we are. And then all I have to do is just carry this over. Okay. You say, wow, okay. Okay, now I have a little bit of a problem here because let's see, this is for 2008. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back and I've got total receipts minus total disbursements. I'm going to go ahead and just because I don't want to have to rename them every year because it's obvious down here in the spreadsheet. So, this, so I, this, uh, this is kind of a well, this isn't going to work for us. So let's just go ahead and back out of them. All right. We'll put that in there. And we'll go back in here and make sure that and as I backed out of it, I didn't mess this up too bad. I think I did. Uh, the state employee, this should be uh, what plus zero plus 0.13. I thought we could use the name manager there, and it didn't look like all other expenses. Uh, 6%, so that should be 6%. That's my mistake. The tax levy, they said they would keep it only at 4 Okay, and then miscellaneous receipts, 5%, so I'll change that back to 5. And we'll go back in the name manager, and since we're not going to use that, receipts, since we're not going to use those, that, those names, Look at that here for a second. And I'm looking for them. Yeah, it's all right. So we'll keep B16.
minus B38. Okay. And this should be then C16. Now to be safe, here's what I am going to do is this. I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the letter so that it is so that there's no mistaking that I'm working with the row. I'm coming across on the row and I'm coming down the I'm I'm staying with the columns. Okay. Okay, so we took a little bit of a venture there. All righty, now let's make sure that we have everything right. We have our base, base data is correct, and then this data uh, is going to go down by 6%. We're checking the assumptions again, and then we're going to look at employees, 13% uh, for uh, employee expenses. It's going to go up every year, and then all other expenses will go up 6%. And miscellaneous receipts to rise five percent in the tax levy. Now you can see with the assumptions area how we can how we can use it to build some forecasts, alternative forecasts. All I've got to do is change the is change the figures up here, and all the others will change. So as it stands right now, the city of Clintwood has a positive balance. But if they follow ahead with their current assumptions into 2009, all right, the deficit will be 248, and then in 2010, it would be uh, a uh, 360, $368,000 deficit. The deficit's just going to keep getting bigger, okay? Uh, and again, uh, we start with the base year, and we'll re and we'll reformat those again just to make them look pretty like they should have. And we'll do the same way. And there we go. And we had that done. All righty. So now we have some issues. All right. We've got the, and we've seen how we've constructed this. You say, okay, Dr. Harmon. Now, now what? Well, now we have some alternatives. Okay. Let's look at my first alternative is. To, to raise revenues. In fact, I'm going to put in a text box here. Okay. I'm going to click insert text box. And I'm going to put in my alternatives. That's not how you spell alternatives. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Raise revenues. Old expenses. Uh, keep expenses. Raise revenues. Keep expenses as planned. Okay. Here's the second one. Raise revenues. Lower expenses. Our third is to keep revenues as planned. Lower expenses. Those seem to be my three choices. Raise more money and keep the expenses as planned. Okay. The other is to raise more money. Okay. And create and, and let me see in in terms of in, in instead of increase, I really ought to to, uh, to to call that increase. Of 
increase revenues. I got a spelling problem today, don't I? Increase revenues. Uh, increase revenues, lower expenses, keep revenues as planned, and lower expenses. So here's my three basic choices. Increase the revenues, keep the expenses as planned, so I overcome the deficit, or increase the revenues and lower the expenses, or keep the expenses as planned, and lower the revenues, lower the experience, expenses. Those are my choices, basically. Now, these may or may not be politically palatable to everybody in the city. Okay? I'll raise more money, keep my expenses as planned, Increase revenues, uh, lower expenses, or keep revenues as planned, lower expenses. And I want to get that same. There we go. Okay. Well, let's look at this for just a minute. Now, I want to I want to show you something else in here. And uh, you click on the click on the data tab, and come over. Click on data, and click over, and you'll see a thing called what if analysis. And let's click on there and look on the scenario manager, and let's see if we've built a scenario or a set of scenarios for this. And we haven't. If we wanted to, we could use the scenario manager, okay, to 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 look at some alternatives. And we could do that by simply changing these assumptions. Now let's start with the very first one, and let's say, okay, let's assume the state A is going to say the going to stay the same. But I'm going to go ahead and instead of doing a four percent, I'm just going to tell people, look, we've got to have more money. We're going to raise the revenue. Uh, we're going to raise the. Uh, um, we're going to raise this instead of four percent. For tax levy, it's going to be six. Okay, and instead of the miscellaneous receipts at five, I'm going to try to get them to seven percent. Okay, now I could use the scenario manager here, but I really don't need to because I've got the assumptions built in here. But if I wanted to, I could I could do the scenario manager, and we'll mess with it. Uh, in, in another case, okay? Now, we're gonna come down and let's take a look at what's what's happened. And notice, using these new, okay, where we increase the uh, tax levy 2% and the, uh, the um, uh, miscellaneous receipts from, they were to be at 5% and took them to 7%, okay? Uh, now, we've got lower deficits, okay? And people are not going to be happy because we're, we're, we're increasing the tax levy, okay, to 6%, and we're increasing the miscellaneous receipts. So now as a decision maker, and I would ask you as you're sitting out there and looking at this, okay, okay, well, we're, what's the, what's the, bit, what's the gorilla, 800 gorilla, how, what's the 800 pound gorilla in this room? And here it is. Employee salary benefits that are growing by 13% a year. I can't do much about the state aid. Okay, I can try to have my, my elected officials, state officials lobby them to give us more money. Chances are it will be, will fall on deaf ears. Then the state government has their own problems. But this is something I definitely can control. And so I'm gonna say, okay, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to try to get this. And since since the since everybody in town is bearing some pain in terms of high, paying higher tax levy, okay, and in terms of miscellaneous receipts going up, then I'm going to say, okay, are the employees in the state, okay, 
we need to slow down some of the growth in our employee salary and benefits expenses. My hunch is most of the growth is probably in benefits. So we're going to take and so we're going to say let's take this down and and, and so we're going to cut this down to 10%. Okay? And let's see what happens. Ah, oh, we're pretty close. We're on our way to some kind of a solution. Okay? Now let's say all right, let's say if we go with the tax levy, let's try and see what happens if we go with 6.5% instead of just 6. And that's where I got the 1.65%. And we are getting close. Then we'll go to the miscellaneous. Uh, let's look at the other expenses. Okay? And we're going to try to hold the line on them. We haven't done anything, but we're going to try to take them and hold them at 5%. Let's see what happens. Now, here we're in good shape. Here we're not so good shape, but I've used conditional formatting, as you can tell. So if we're below zero, it goes to this red. If we're, at z if, if we're above zero in terms of receipts, less disbursements, it goes to this green. And if we're even, even Stephen, it's white. So you can see how this assumption area lets us play around with some outcomes. And we can say, well, you know, it's, uh, this, uh, this is a pretty decent plan. We'll be a little bit of a deficit. But the year after that, we're going to be in a we're going to be in pretty good shape. All right, but that you know, but the people in the town would say, well, you know, we don't want any types of deficits, so we may have to go back here and let's and instead of uh, instead of messing with, let's go the employee salary benefits, and we're going to try to keep that instead of ten percent. At 9.5 percent, 0.095, and let's see what happens. And if we do that now, we we're even here. We've got a small surplus, and here we have a fairly sizable surplus. And what we could say to everybody is, look, if we end up here with this sizable surplus in 2010, okay then we're in good shape. Now, just for, since this is all, since we've got this set up to scroll, I am going to do one thing here to make this a little nicer. I'm going to come right down here below these, and I'm going to cut and paste them in so you can see. Here's the base. Here's the forecast for 2009, the forecast for 2010. And that's okay. Not, nothing wrong with that. And, uh, in fact, what I could even do is make this kind of pretty by using that blue. So we'll click on Home. And we kind of then we make this, and I'll take these three cells right here, which would be uh, B8, B, B8, C9, and D9. Okay, and I can even put the uh, all borders around it. Same story here. And I have a real nice, I have a very nice looking spreadsheet. Not bad at all. And I've gotten, I have then a workable solution, okay, for this, for this budget, all right? <clears throat> and notice I did some compromising and some work. Well, okay, that looks fantastic. You say, okay, let's look then at the columns and see how we use, let's look at these rows and see how we use uh, some cell referencing. And here we start with the, with the uh, tax levy. Okay, this is for uh, a 2008. Then here we are equals tax levy times B12. Okay, and equals tax levy times C12. Okay, So we took this, here's our, here, here's our tax levy, all right? Then we took it times B12. And you say, what is B12? Well, there it is. And then we take the tax levy times C12. OK? 
okay? And in each case, you see, we've, we've grown this And then we've got the state aid. And then we've got state aid times uh, B, B13. Now let me stack it, let me walk it back for a minute. Here's the base figure, okay? And then here we took the tax levy, okay? That's this cell right here, the 1.065 times B12. So we, so we took that times the, the uh, 2008 base figure. Then we took the tax levy again times C12. And that's how we get the increment for each year. All right. And then the same thing over here. Here's the base figure for state aid. Then the and then we have state aid time. And I'll just click on these. Okay, so you can see them. And there's the state aid times B13. And then we have the state aid times C13. Remember, state aid's going down 6% a year. Now I have miscellaneous receipts, the base period. Then I take the miscellaneous receipts times B14. That gives me 2009. And the same story, the miscellaneous receipts. And see how I use the name manager, okay? And then I use the sum function to get the total receipts. And I come down here the same way. And that's how I'm using this assumption area and the name manager to get these figures. Okay. And I want to see that. I've got the employee benefits here now. I've got a figure missing there. So I want to come across with that. And that may blow us out of the water. Let's see, it's going to be employee salary at the time B31. Okay, times C31. And we're still in good shape here. Get a little bit of a message there, that, but we're good. And that we end up with and then we'll take that and that's and we'll get this the, the, the all expenses, all other expenses, okay? And then the receipts. And then we'll get the total disbursements, B21 to B37. Okay? And so we're in good shape there. So what we did is we did kind of a mixture of everything, okay? And we were able to kind of work through our alternatives and we, we did kind of a mixture of increasing revenues, okay? And lowering expenses. And that's really the alternative that we took right here was this one. We worked on both both sides of this ledger to get it into good shape. And that's that's pretty much what we've done here uh, with this. Now, again, just to make sure that you understand, I'm gonna take it. Here we start with a base year, that's 2008. Then we're gonna take the employee and salary benefit, the employee and salary benefits assumption percentage, how much will they go up or go down, times that B21. Then we see a, that, that percentage applied to C21. 
and then we can work with these forecasts to get something that is that's acceptable. Now this is this is good, okay? And we might say, well, okay. We applied the conditional formatting to to here and to here. This one's close. This one we we might be able to say, okay, uh, maybe if think you know if we're that close, what could we do with let's let's look at the tax levy. And instead of the tax levy uh, being 6.5, let's see if we could make it 6.25. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Let's go down here and look out. Yeah, we ran a deficit of eight grand, so that's not going to work. So we're going to go back here to the to the uh, tax levy, and let's try that and make that a 0 0.6. I don't know, 40. We're kind of tinkering around at six, a uh, six point four percent anchor. Ah, we're close. We're gonna have to leave it at six point five, and we're good. Okay. So that's pretty much how we do some forecasting. We take a base period. Then we multiply the base period times some, some factor, okay? In this case, it's like the, the tax set levy, all right? And then we can just extrapolate it on over. And we use the assumptions area to get that done. And we did a little bit of work here in terms of decision making, because what we did is we increased some revenues, we lowered some expenses. So th this is a good plan because, you know, we're not just saying we're just going to raise taxes and everything and everybody and keep, keep the expenses like they are. Now, if you were to ask now, from a pl practical standpoint, the second big takeaway is you always in a budget, you, okay? You look for the gorilla in an 800 pound gorilla in the room and it's typically, typically going to be employee salary and benefits. That's going to be the key. Okay, because if you come down here and you look, it is the largest figure. Okay, it's the monster. Okay, now as you note here, okay, we've got a lot more money for police than we do for the fire department. So that's something that people are going to be talking about or looking at. And, and try and put some additional information here as well. Or, or maybe play around with it. Okay. And there would be nothing that would stop us, right, from, from using the scenario manager. And I'm gonna take just a minute or two, a little bit of time to do that, okay, and so let's click on uh, data, go to what if analysis, click on scenario manager, and click add. And I'm going to call this base case. Okay. And I'll click on by changing cells. And then I'm going to click OK. Well, they won't, yeah. OK. Now, notice that we have, uh, what I did is I, the scenario values, OK, are the assumption values up here. OK? And it gives us those. And I'm going to click OK. And we'll do this again, so, you know, don't, don't get all hepped up about it. And so I've got that scenario called the base case. In fact, I'm going to edit it and call it best case. Because this was our final solution, okay? Now let's do the base case. So I'm going to click add. And I'm going to call it base case. 
And by changing cells G3 through 37, and I'll click OK. And so I'm going to start with state eight. Now, originally, we so we're working on the base case that is the original set of assumptions. Uh, the, the, we're going to the state aid will go down six percent a year. Salary and benefits are going to be going up thirteen percent a year. All other expenses, and I'm looking back here again in the middle of page fifty-five. All other expenses are going to go up six percent annually. The tax levy, we promised we'd keep it at 4%. And then miscellaneous receipts, um, 5%. So to make sure I've got this right, uh, the, the, the state aid will decrease 6% a year, so that's 0 0.94, that makes sense. The employee salary and benefits will go up 13% uh, annually. All other expenses will be 1.06. So they go up 6% annually, and miscellaneous receipts will rise 5% annually. Service day will remain constant. And uh, we're not, we, and we say we're not going to raise taxes be, beyond 4%. So we'll click OK. And we've called this the base case. And now if we want to see what it looks like, it's simple. I click Show. And see all the numbers in the assumptions area changed. And then I'll close this and I'll go down and I'll look and there we were. Back to our original assumptions. Now I can click again on data. I can click on what if analysis. I can go to the scenario manager and now I can look at best case. And I'll click show and those new assumptions on those increments or decrements show up. I'll close this off and I'll go down there. You said, Dr. Herman, would it be possible for me to use the scenario manager to create a base case, a best case, and a worst case? Absolutely. We're going to do a, a worst case nightmare scenario so if things get out of control or a problem emerges. And I'm going to and I'm going to click add. Now I'm going to put worst case. Okay, by changing cells G3 through 7. And now here in the state aid, I'm going to assume the state aid is going to go, uh, is going to go down 6%, okay? I, and I'm going to put the, um, the uh, employee salary and benefits, okay, at 13%. Okay. And I'm going to say that we've told the people we won't go any further than 4% in terms of the tax levy, but they've gone berserk on us and said, you're going to, you, you will not raise the tax levy one cent. Okay, so we're going to put that 1.00. And then miscellaneous receipts, people said there we want some cuts on those, so we're going to go down to 1.03%. Uh, a 3% will click okay. And that's our worst case, and let's show, and let's see what we're looking at. And there we are. That's our nightmare scenario. So now we'll go back up here and go into the what-if analysis, and notice we've saved them. We can click on the worst case, we have best case, and we have base case. Let's click on base case and click show, and we'll be back to where we originally were in the problem. Okay, and I can come up here in the scenario manager. I can click best case. I'll show that. Okay, then if we want, we can uh, we can click on you know we you say well how about a uh, how about a medium case. Why not? So I'll click add. See the value of that assumptions area? We're just working on those cells right there. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to assume that the state aid, 
okay, is going to stay the same. The employee's salary and benefits, uh, they were going to be a, a medium case, and we're only able to get them down to 11%. All their expenses were to be at uh, rise at 6% annually. I was only able to get them down to 5.5%. The tax levy, uh, folks balked, and I was able to get it to uh, zero, uh, 3.75%. So I kept my promise. And then miscellaneous receipts, we keep them at 7%. percent I'll click OK. And so I've got my medium case. Some things went well, some things went bad, some things pretty much stayed what we thought they would do. I'll click show. And I'll close this off and I'll go down. Okay. And now I can click back up here and I can see the scenario manager, uh, the base case. This is where we started. Okay. And I can do the uh, uh, a medium case. All right, that doesn't look so hot. And we can do the uh, best case. And here we are. And again, the thing that really, you know, that really becomes an issue is this thing of the employee salary and benefits, simply because, okay, um, you know, it, it, it's simply, it's simply because we've got, you know, the uh, it, it, it's expected to raise thirteen, or go up thirteen percent a year. It's the biggest growth item in my budget, and I need to do something with it. Okay, so you see how I've kind of embellished this. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to save this. All right. And like I said, you know, you'll want to share it. I mean, you'll want to upload case, and this is case five. Okay. And uh, I guess I'm still here. Yeah. I'm still going. Well, let me get back into the OBU thing. I just X'd everything out. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I love it. It's been one of those days, folks. I'll go back into Canvas. But you're still here with me. You should be. Yep. Good. I'll log into Canvas again. That was a surprise. But at least I didn't uh, knock you guys off. You're still being recorded. So let's go back down here. And uh, this is Section B. Okay, and we'll go back into the modules. And here is uh, XLS case five, and I'll open it back up. And you can see it. Okay, and then you can upload your file for XLS case five. So you should have all five of the first five Excel, Excel cases loaded up there. And then again, okay, uh, we've got, uh, you know, you've got the um, financial ratios quiz coming up. You know where to find the information on it. And I started early, so I'm going to stop early. We've done our 75 minutes of time, and that'll do it for us this week. And then I will be back in Shawnee tomorrow. I'll do a live class session over there of this same class, uh, of this same case, because both sections are, are, on, are on top of each other, uh, are, you know, are, are flowing along at the same pace. Okay, folks, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it, and uh, have a good one. And I'll stop the share now, and then I'll stop the recording.